<laughs> yeah, maybe would have booked a bigger venue if, uh, if we had known. But uh, we can be cozy. But we don't have standing room only. We're close. <laughs> <laughs> I look around the room, it's a thrill for me to know absolutely everybody in the room. So that's pretty nice. Including Thad Schunkweiler. You got it. Okay. <laughs> House District 19B. I have to read that off your tape. Yep. I don't have those <laughs> <laughs> memorized. Uh, Mr. Bruce. statement but I'd like to make a couple of um, informal remarks before I go to that and the remarks have to do with the setting that the United States finds itself in and uh, to comment on that as you noticed I do have with me the debt chart that accompanies me uh, pretty much wherever I go any legislation needs to be considered in the context of this debt and uh, the debt speaks for itself. I think you know that we have now exceeded $16 trillion in debt uh, as of uh, just a day or two ago. The uh, importance of that um, is uh, extraordinary. For example, in 2011, 20 cents out of every federal dollar that uh, we collected was spent for interest on the debt. And according to present trends in 2014, that's going to be 25 cents out of every dollar that the feds collect will be spent on interest. Obviously, our ability to meet our obligations, uh, whether it be to farmers, whether it be to food stamps, whether it be to Social Security, whether it be to Medicare, Medicaid, uh, our ability to meet our obligations is seriously compromised by the interest on the debt and on the debt itself. So I think it's pretty well known that my position is we have to start reducing spending, not increasing it. And I propose that we reduce spending by about 200 billion a year. We do that for five years. We also adopt an economic growth policy for our country. I think we can get our GDP growth up to the 4% range. If we do those two things, we can balance the budget in about five years. Uh, that is my uh, objective as a candidate for Congress. Uh, but uh, as I stand before you today, I have to be the same person before an election that I intend to be afterwards. And so I'm going to speak very frankly. Uh, I think you know I'm a numbers guy, and so a lot of what I'm going to say has to do with numbers. I also want to put uh, before us a second chart and uh, this chart describes the growth in federal spending since 1970. And the top line is uh, federal spending growth. The bottom line is personal income growth. This chart only goes through 2008. If we took this up to 2012, the federal spending growth would be off the chart, and the personal income growth would be down about another percentage point, about three more percentage points. What this chart shows is that federal spending has increased 12 times faster than personal income. Obviously, that is unsustainable. And so another part of my platform is that we need to cut back on federal spending so that we don't have excessive burden on the free enterprise system. Why is the economy unable to grow and create jobs? I believe it's because we have too much overhead and the federal spending is a big part of it. Now, let me give you some more numbers. Back in 2002, 18% of the GDP consisted of federal government spending. Today, it's 24%. Obviously, that is unsustainable, 
I believe we need to go back to that 18 percent uh, level, and uh, that's uh, again part of my uh, part of my platform. I'd also like to mention that because I'm going to talk about food stamps this morning, I want to clarify that I support food stamps. I support people that uh, need food stamps, but the direction of the food stamp program is unsustainable. It is uh, being run in a manner that is not good financial management. And if we're going to have a sustainable program, we have to be good managers. The last thing uh, I want to mention is that I believe that when the citizens elect somebody to Congress, they are not only electing somebody to represent the interests uh, of their district, they are basically hiring somebody to be a good manager of the nation's resources. And that's something that uh, a responsibility that I take very seriously. And really the two interests are combined. Because as the nation goes, so goes the first congressional district. And there's an old saying in economics that a rising tide lifts all ships. But the reverse is true. A receding tide can leave all ships high and dry. And so the well-being of the first district, and I will add to that, the well-being of agriculture in the first district is highly dependent on the federal government getting its financial uh, uh, picture in order. And that has to be priority one. So. Uh, Having said that, I go to my uh, brief prepared remarks. I believe the so-called Farm Bill needs to be sent back to the House Agriculture Committee for repair. The bill is financially irresponsible and unacceptable as it is. I also believe that the public has a right to know that 80% of the spending in that bill is for food stamps, also called SNAP, Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program. And uh, that it's only about 20% that's for conservation and uh, income subsidies for, for uh, farmers. There are at least three major revisions in this bill that I believe need to be made. The first is that the bill needs to be separated into two different bills. One being a farm bill, the other being a food stamp bill. Having two different subjects in one bill is one of the reasons why our federal debt is out of control. If we're going to evaluate properly any bill, it has to be taken uh, independently. And uh, I think that is uh, part of what good management requires. A second change that needs to be made is that the eligibility requirements for food stamps need to be revised so that married people and couples who cohabit are treated equally. It is easier to qualify for food stamps if you don't get married. And that is a reason why two-thirds of the people on food stamps are unmarried. When uh, I, I believe it is wrong for Washington to discriminate against married people, as it does in food stamps and as it does in Obamacare. The third and biggest problem with the bill is its unacceptable level of spending. One half trillion dollars over the next five years. And so this bill makes this problem and this problem substantially worse. We need to be reducing spending, not increasing it. And I will simply say that is obvious from the information at hand. The so-called Farm Bill presents Congress with the all-important question of whether it is willing to change the destructive financial course that it is following or not. So this bill is a bellwether of whether Congress is going to engage in good management uh, or not do so. So I favor the plan of Congressman Paul Ryan uh, to block grant food stamps uh, to the states and allow them to administer the program adding their own money to the program if they wish. Congress has demonstrated its incompetence in managing the food stamp program. I believe the states will do better. Block grants give states the incentive to keep costs down. As, as it is now, 
The federal government pays the entire cost of the food stamps themselves. The states only pay half of the administrative costs. Government should be trying to get people off of food stamps, not getting more people on. When citizens elect somebody to represent them in Congress, they are essentially hiring that person to be a good manager of the nation's financial resources and other resources. And I want to make it very, very clear that I take that responsibility very seriously. Um, so those are my prepared remarks. I'd be very happy to respond to uh, questions. Um, anything relating to the park? Um, otherwise, let me just add this. Uh, we know the political, uh, what should I say, situation where there are numerous individuals and nu numerous groups clamoring for a for an adoption of the food stamp uh, for the <laughs> food stamp bill with the farm bill rider prior to October one. Uh, I believe uh, that uh, what should I say? I believe that that uh, pressure and that message is misguided. We do far better to send the bill back to committee and get it fixed. The bill is totally irresponsible. There are serious questions about whether it can pass the way it is. Um, I don't think it should pass. But people that have an interest in it, which I do as a farmer, uh, I believe should be asking to send it back and let's get it repaired. And uh, then we can proceed. Okay, questions? Paul? Two, two questions. One is what percentage goes to subsidy for farmers in this bill? And the second one is, is it true that the states have incentives to get more people onto food stamps, or am I misguided in making this? Well, uh, uh, let me take the second question first. The states do have incentives to get people on the farm bill. Uh, for example, uh, the Department of Agriculture has been paying states bonuses for getting more people on. Secondly, states have an interest in bringing federal money into their states. And so Minnesota competes with uh, Wisconsin, competes with South Dakota, competes with Iowa in terms of bringing federal dollars in. That's another incentive uh, for states to get people uh, on the program. Uh, so, so the incentives are upside down. In government, you should always have incentives for keeping costs down, not incentives for raising costs up. Paul, what was your first question? Again? What percentage of the bill actually goes to subsidy to farmers? Right now, the bill is half a trillion dollar bill. About 80% goes to food stamps, 11% goes to subsidies for farmers, 9% goes to conservation programs, which farmers may benefit from. But it's only 11% that goes for farmers. Now, when it comes to prioritizing, uh, let me compare that 80 mil, that billion a year figure to what we spend on roads and bridges. Because uh, the federal government spends about 40 billion a year uh, on roads and bridges. Half of what we now would spend on food stamps in this bill. And so we really have to ask if that is wise prioritizing of our national resources. But uh, my position is everything's on the table and then we prioritize. But obviously I would give a higher priority uh, to highways for, all, for reasons that are pretty obvious. Other questions? Kira? Yeah. Alan, if, if we believe, if I believe, and the people here, the people that read mm -hmm. about what you're proposed, or stating um, is true and we believe that, what steps should each of us take? What, when this goes out, mm -hmm. what steps should each person be taking? Well, I think you should. Uh, you know, uh, just for starters, I think uh, letters to the editor, I know the, uh, the free press is very good at printing letters. I think talking to your friends uh, would be helpful. If you agree with what I'm saying, uh, Quiz for Congress accepts donations, and that's always a plus. Um, but, uh, but a lot of good grassroots politics is friends talking to friends. So yes, What about the contacts? Or, or is it going to be best to make phone calls to Washington, or where, what's going to happen, what is the best step to stop this and send it back? 